Hey there, welcome back to our Harklet YouTube channel. Welcome, if this is your first video, we're happy to have you here. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla, and today we're gonna give you five tips for parenting a highly sensitive child. I have a lot to say on the top. I know you do. <laughs> Before we jump into today's topic, we just want to give you a quick heads up that it is Sensory Processing Disorder Awareness Month, and we are so excited to celebrate by sharing our new, kind of new, sensory diet course with you. This digital course teaches you all about sensory processing, sensory processing disorder, and it teaches you how to create a unique, personalized sensory diet routine that can help your child feel more successful throughout the day. If you are watching right now in October, it is on sale. We're gonna put all of the details and links in the description below, so make sure you check it out. But if you're watching this later on, just know that you can go to those links and you can check it out. And we do include AOTA CEUs now, so if you are an occupational therapist or an occupational therapy assistant, you do get continuing education units. So if you click this video because you're like, I don't know if I have a highly sensitive child or I, I might be highly sensitive myself, we're gonna break it down for you today. We're gonna keep it pretty simple, but we're also gonna give some tips for parenting a sensitive child. The first question we wanna ask, is your child anxious? Are they nervous all the time? Do they avoid everyday play activities like the playground and swings and slides? Are they sensitive to noises like the toilet flushing or an airplane flying over the sky or in loud places like the classroom? Yeah, do they struggle in very busy environments like the swimming pool or the grocery store? Maybe they have meltdowns or they just get super anxious when it's time to go there. These are all some potential signs that you might have a highly sensitive child, or maybe if you answered yes to some of these, then you might be a little bit more on the sensitive side when we're talking about our sensory system. So let's break it down. Let's talk about what it means to be a highly sensitive person. So we're gonna give you an analogy to describe a highly sensitive person or also known as a sensory avoider. So someone who's a sensory avoider has their cup and it's already filled to the top at the beginning of the day and just a little bit more is gonna make it overflow and cause a meltdown or cause overstimulation. Whereas on the flip side, a sensory seeker, their cup is not very full and it takes a lot to get their cup to go all the way to the top. So a sensory avoider, highly sensitive child, highly sensitive person, they don't need very much sensory input to feel overwhelmed. It's mm -hmm. very easy to feel anxious and overwhelmed with just a little mm -hmm. bit. But it's even just, they don't need a lot of input in order to feel regulated either. You know, if they don't overflow their cup, they just need a little bit and then they're like, okay, I'm good, you know? And then like Jessica mentioned, as soon as it goes over, they're having a sensory meltdown. So let's talk a little bit about what some potential signs and symptoms could be with each of the eight different sensory senses here. And we wanna make sure that you understand you can be avoidant to some of these, you can, be, you can be highly sensitive to some of these, or you could be seeking of some of these as well. Most people have mixed responses here. We do have another video on parenting a sensory seeking child. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, oh, my child doesn't really avoid these, they seek these more, make sure you check that video out. It'll be linked in the description. The first one is the visual system and a child might avoid certain environments because there's too much light or it's too bright or it's too busy. There's too much commotion going on and it's just a little bit overwhelming for them. The next one is the auditory sense and the child might avoid environments that are too loud or echoey. I always think of the pool or the restaurant where there's so much noise and it's echoey. Child might really avoid going into those situations or your child might cover their ears and become really anxious and avoidant when the blender is running or the vacuum cleaner. The next one is the tactile system, and this is one that is pretty common when we hear kids avoiding clothing textures. Their seams are wrong on their socks, their pants are you know, not the right texture, their shirt tag is bothering them, and they really can't tune out that sensory input in order to have that adaptive response in order to feel good, so it's really bothersome to them all day long. 
The next one is the gustatory system, and this is your sense of taste. And a child who is sensitive or an avoider to this sense will often be a picky eater. They will avoid certain food textures or certain food flavors. Oftentimes you'll kind of see a pattern and you'll see that they eat the same foods over and over. Maybe the foods are the same color, they're all the same texture. Maybe they have very limited amounts of flavor. Now this is one where a child might go into a public bathroom and maybe it stinks and maybe they'll have an adverse reaction. Maybe they'll, you know, run out, maybe they'll vomit, maybe they'll refuse to go to the bathroom, but they're very sensitive to different smells in their environment. The next one is vestibular, and this is our sense of movement. And we have receptors located in our inner ear that anytime we have a head position change or a movement, that vestibular system is activated. So if the child is an avoider to vestibular or they're highly sensitive to vestibular input, they are gonna avoid those movement activities because it's too much for their brain and body to process. They might avoid swings, slides, they might dislike car rides, and they might get motion sickness very easily. They might also avoid any rotary type movement because they get dizzy so easily. The next one is the proprioceptive sense, and this is the one where you are getting that input to your joints and muscles and tendons, but research has shown that most people, most people aren't over responsive to the proprioceptive sense. So that means that we can't really overdose, we can't really get too much proprioception. Instead, we use this as the calming, overriding input. So whenever we are feeling overstimulated by you know, tactile input or visual input, we use that proprioceptive input to organize the nervous system and to get it back down to that calm state. The last one is interoception, and this is our sense of our body and our internal senses like hunger, thirst, using the bathroom, and also our emotions and our ability to control our emotions and understand what they mean. So a child who's highly sensitive or a sensory avoider is gonna be highly anxious. They are gonna have really high emotions. Oftentimes we'll call these kiddos, they're highly emotional, but we often see just anxiety is a big one that we see. Yep. So now that you have kind of an understanding of what it might look like, you know, if this is your child to a T or if this is your own personal sensory system here, you're a little bit more sensitive, let's talk about some of the five tips that you can do to really help and understand and empower your highly sensitive child. The first one is to make sure that you are identifying their unique sensory needs. So we have a free checklist, we'll link it in the description. It's a really easy way to identify if, a, if you or if your child is overstimulated by certain senses or if they are under responsive or craving more sensory input. So fill out that checklist and identify where you are on that sensory continuum. The next strategy is gonna to be to use calming activities, calming sensory activities throughout the day. So not just at one point in the day, but throughout the day to help your child feel more calm and regulated. So these are gonna be those proprioceptive based activities deep pressure, heavy work, things like that. So things like slow swinging in a compression swing, that linear input is calming with that hug from the compression swing. Things like chewing gum provides that input to the joints. Things like um, weighted items, a lap pad, compression clothing, compression sheets, weighted blankets, things like animal walking, really focus on what input provides the most like compression or stretching to the joints, muscles, and tendons all around your body, not just like your arms and your legs, like your mouth. You have a lot of receptors in your mouth. That's why chewing gum is so grounding, sucking on hard candy if they're safe to do that, um, things like that, pushing your tongue to the roof of your mouth, tons of, tons of activities. Um, that you can do that are very organizing. We do have another YouTube video all about the proprioceptive system and specific calming proprioceptive activities that you can do. We'll link that in the description so you can get some more ideas. The next one is to create a sensory regulation toolbox that you can take on the go. So this is something that you can put together with your child or for yourself and you can have it in the car or like in a backpack, whatever works best for the situation. But you can put things like 
noise canceling headphones, essential oils, um, a lap pad or a little weighted blanket, maybe some fidgets or um, some preferred little toys that are regulating and, and just, just things that provide relief and comfort to the child. Um, just make sure that you have them available so that way it's like your little on-the-go sensory toolbox. Yeah, it's perfect for when you're going to those environments and situations that your child struggles with, right? Mm -hmm. The restaurant, the grocery store, swimming pool, the school, and they can use this you know, on-the-go toolbox to help stay regulated before they go as well as after they leave. Mm -hmm. We always like to incorporate sensory strategies proactively instead of reactively. So if we can organize the nervous system before going into a potentially disorganizing environment, we're going to have a, a better response in that challenging environment. So if we can do some of these you know, proprioceptive-based activities before we go to the grocery store, maybe they can wear a weighted backpack in the grocery store and they can push the cart and they can just get more input consistently hopefully the goal is that we can avoid some of those potential sensory meltdowns. The next tip is to engage in sensory activities that target multiple senses simultaneously and do these activities with your child especially if they are anxious about these activities and make sure you take it slow do it calmly make it short and sweet so instead of swinging for five minutes Swing for 30 seconds and make it just quick and easy so that they have a positive experience with it. You're going to want to focus on those big three, the proprioceptive system, the tactile system, and the vestibular system. And you can do this with a variety of activities. We'll give you a couple of ideas. Things like Jessica mentioned, swinging slowly in a linear direction, maybe while we are playing with a fidget or we're, you know, um, playing with like a, a tactile activity. So we're getting the proprioception from the, from the compression swing. If you don't have a compression swing, things like putting a weighted blanket inside the swing or sitting on a swing with a weighted blanket, you're getting the vestibular input from the motion of the swing, and then you're getting that tactile input to the hands from the fidget or the item that the child is holding. Another one would be bouncing on a round therapy ball or the yoga ball and playing catch with a weighted item. This you're getting that up and down vestibular input while also catching a weighted item, which is a great grounding heavy work activity. One of my favorites is to crawl on the ground like a turtle and put like a weighted blanket or a lap pad on their back or just an object in general. And they have to crawl slowly so that way they, they don't let the item fall off and they're getting some of that tactile tactile input from the ground and from the carpet, as well as the input from the item on their back. Another one is called the bumpy roll. So you're gonna set up a variety of different objects like pillows and blankets of different textures and different sizes and line them up on the floor and then have your child log roll across them in both directions. So not only are they getting that vestibular input, that rotary vestibular input that they might typically avoid, but they're required to use more muscle force with their body to get over these different objects. And they're simultaneously getting a variety of different textures, tactile input from the different textures. So this can be a great activity to do, you know, to help them process all of that different input. The last one here we're gonna leave you with is to use a program that really targets the brain and working on the sensory system from the inside out. So we love therapeutic music. We love using these, these auditory processing programs that really work from the inside out. So our, you know, a couple of examples that you could look into would be the listening program by Advanced Brain Technologies. This is the one that I'm currently doing with my son. Um, another one is therapeutic listening, and then another one to look at is the integrated listening system or the safe and sound program. This is another one that I've done for me personally as an adult, and I feel like it's really helped. Um, it kind of takes you out of that fight or flight response. So definitely recommend looking into those. The Really just the, the therapeutic music is so beneficial to work on the nervous system. If this video was helpful in giving you some ideas to help parent your highly sensitive child, make sure you check out our other video on sensory avoiders. We have more tips and strategies in that video. We'll link it below. If you are really concerned about your child's sensory system, if their sensory needs are really impacting their ability to get through daily activities, please 
go to an occupational therapist, get an, get an evaluation, ask your pediatrician for a referral because those in-person therapy services are so beneficial. Just, just remember that you need to empathize with their sensory system, with their sensory needs. They're really not being bad kids. They're not purposely trying to avoid doing those everyday you know, activities that we think should be fun and exciting for kids. Their sensory system is really impacting their ability to just function and to get through those daily activities. If you want more ideas on how to incorporate sensory activities into your lifestyle or into your child's lifestyle, make sure you check out our sensory diet course. It's on sale right now in October for Sensory Processing Disorder Awareness Month. And we teach you, we dive really deep into mm -hmm. sensory processing and sensory processing disorder and how to create those unique sensory diet routines and lifestyles for your child and for you, if you're a therapist, how to incorporate into the treatment sessions and how to teach families carry over with it. So it's really helpful for learning more about sensory and incorporating it into your life. And bonus is it does include those AOTA CEUs now. So if you are an occupational therapist or an occupational therapy assistant and you need some continuing education units, you get those once you complete the post-test from our course. All right, if you liked this video, make sure you like it, leave us a comment with your questions or what your favorite activity was, and then make sure you subscribe to the Hardcore channel. We have so much fun sharing this information with you. We hope that it is beneficial and we drop a new video every Tuesday, so we will plan on seeing you next week. Oh, I have to burn. Okay. Are you ready now? Yep. How's my hair? <laughs>